Hey, this is Sky. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So today, let's talk about working out. I wish that I could inspire every single person to work out. I wish that I could make just one or two videos and have everybody who watches it run out and get a gym membership or go and buy some weights or get themselves on a workout program of some sort. There's so many different ways that you can work out, so you really have no excuse. But not everybody is really down with that. Some people love it. And they make it a lifestyle. And that would be, be me. I, for me, it's been important to be strong for a very long time. And I have multiple reasons why I want to be strong just physically. But also it teaches me discipline. It teaches me goal acquisition in life. How to achieve goals. How to go through struggle. It teaches me that strength is built through repetition, not overnight. These are important, valuable lessons in life. Stuff that your father can't really teach you. You have to learn it on your own. So for me, it's a lifestyle. And I won't give it up until I'm dead. I'll be working out when I'm 100, if I live that long. And then there's some people that really only make time for it when they, when they have the time. And this is really just about priorities because a lot of these people will have several hours at night where they're just sitting down watching TV, unwinding. They have time every night when they're just sitting around drinking. Many people, especially my age and younger, uh, spend a lot of time playing video games. They could spend three hours of video game time and, and just say, well, I just don't have time to work out. You really, you don't have 45 minutes. You don't have an hour. You don't have a half hour to do some exercise. Give me a break but it's just about priorities. And then there's the third type of person that just refuses. And you can't shame them into it. You can't motivate them into it, certainly. You, you, you can't uh, bully them into it. You couldn't even pay them. I'll give you 20 bucks every time you go to the gym. I'll give you 100 bucks. I'll give you $1,000 if you go to the gym six times a week. They, they, wouldn't, they, they still wouldn't do it. They'd collect the money and go hide and around the corner at the bar or something. They'd just be, there's nothing you're going to do to get these people to work out. Some people are just so dedicated to their weakness, as if they have a right to be weak. You know, Jordan Peterson, who I love, a psychologist, he said, it's a quote from him, he says, you have no right to be weak. And I truly believe that. It's not fair to put your weakness, your burden upon others, as if we're all supposed to take care of you, we're all supposed to protect you. But there's nothing you can do to convince those people into working out. They're more dedicated to their noodle arms and their man titties, their fat bellies, than they are to being healthy. And that's just the way it goes. And I've wondered about this third group of people of, well, what is up with this? Is it a, a, a mental problem? Seriously, is it some sort of psychosis? Are they, are they, you know, depressed? Is the laziness more than just laziness? Is it, is it rooted in some sort of childhood, childhood issue? And, you know, what I finally learned after researching this was that the number one reason why a lot of out of shape people don't work out, don't exercise, particularly don't go to the gym, and I believe in working out with weights. The number one reason is because they're intimidated by the environment. They find the environment intimidating. They find being around a bunch of in-shape people intimidating. Some noodle-armed, fat belly, out-of-shape guy can be very intimidated in a gym full of bodybuilder guys and athletic-looking fitness chicks. you got a girl over there squatting more than you've ever lifted in your life. And that can be really intimidating. And she's just a tiny woman got a whole room full of guys with big giant muscles and you look at yourself, not in your own, you, you, you have a different way of looking at yourself when you're in your mirror brushing your teeth. You're like, ah, oh, I'm not so bad. You get up to the gym, <laughs> you see all these big dudes and you realize, God damn, I'm a total pussy. And that can really be devastating for some people. They don't like that. It's really upsetting. It's really uncomfortable. They really, really don't want to do that. They have an aversion to it and they'll avoid that at all costs. People will naturally gravitate towards comfort. And that's why it's good to get out of your comfort zone. Nothing grows in your comfort zone. 
one of the lessons that I learned in life about the gym is that you grow through struggle. Another quote that I love, but you, I don't know who said it, is you don't search for a hammock, you search for a hill. Because progress and growth in life comes through an uphill struggle, a battle. It doesn't, nothing just comes to you easy in this world. I wish that I could convince people who don't go to the gym to begin exercising and to somehow ease their fear, to settle that anxiety, to dispel this myth that somehow people are judging them. You may be judging yourself, and we are our own worst critics many times. So when you look in the mirrors at the gym and you see how out of shape you are, and you're like, God damn, look at me and everybody else. Oh my God, this isn't my, I'm not, maybe I'm just not meant to be here and people will run off. Nobody else is looking at you like that. In fact, it's the opposite. When I see somebody up at the gym who it's, it's obviously they're new and you can tell by their body style or how they don't really know how to do the movements. I'm proud of them. If I see some 400 pound fat slob on the treadmill, sweating his ass off. Good for you, brother. That's a hero, in my opinion. Because he's trying everything he can to save his life. It's never too late. Nobody's judging you there. People are, 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 are glad that you're up there and that you're finally going to take control of your body. You're, you're going to get rid of your fear of being, uh, 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 and your laziness and become stronger. Nobody is really going to come up to you and talk to you because it's just kind of a self-centered place. It's where you go to work on yourself. But I socialize at the gym. I talk to some of these big bodybuilders and have felt like quite a pussy. And as I've been up there for the last couple years, I've had some really big, giant Arnold Schwarzenegger types come up to me and say, hey, wow, I really uh, see that you're leaning out because I used to be kind of soft and heavier. For a little while there, I was probably 25 pounds heavier and not really working out much. I had a, a gut. I had a couple personal trainers tell me, oh, you'd be in great shape if you just lose that big fat belly of yours. And that really shocked me. But I've had a couple big bodybuilder guys as, as I've on my, been on my progress. And I sometimes feel like the biggest pussy up at the gym. Look around and be like, God, everybody in here could kick my ass, even the chicks. And they've told me, I recognize that you have gotten some gains, you're doing great, you know, and, and not that somebody else's validation means anything, but it just showed me that nobody is up there judging you. Sure, they see you, because it's a big room full of mirrors, but nobody is judging you in a negative way. People are encouraging. It's, it's the one place you can go where people will be supportive and encouraging towards your personal growth. You're not going to find that at the bar. You're not going to find this at work with your buddies. I don't know how to get through to the person who's dedicated to the noodle arms and the man titties and the fat belly, the weak little spindly legs, the out of shape lifestyle, the horrible diet. I don't know how to get through to them. If, if I could, I'd win the Nobel Peace Prize because nobody has been able to figure out how to motivate that, that lot. They're dedicated towards their weakness. But if there's anything that I can say here to dispel that myth that people are up there judging you, because I know it can be intimidating. And that is the number one reason, I've done research on this, it's the number one reason why people don't go to the gym is because they feel intimidated. If there's anything I can do to dispel that, just know that nobody is judging you up there. People are happy that you're there. People are glad to see somebody that's trying. They respect you. I respect a, a person up there, it doesn't matter what shape they're in. I respect a person who's trying more than somebody who's just sitting there. You know, I'll end the video here, but it just depends on how you want to spend your future. I'm 49, I'm getting older. I don't want to spend my future in the doctor's office. I mean, part of that's inevitable, but I don't want to, 
I talked to my grandfather. My grandfather's in his 90s. He spends so much time in the doctor's office, going from doctor to doctor. And it's just come from a lifestyle of weakness. He's broke his hip several times, and it just goes on and on. I don't want that to be me. I'd rather spend my time in the healthy aisles of the grocery store and up at the gym. Because you're going to be spending your time somewhere. So while you're playing video games or sitting at the bar, doing whatever you do, just realize that a little portion of that time, not all of it, just a small portion of that time, if you spend three hours a night playing video games, one hour of that could be spent towards becoming healthier in your body. So I'm sure I haven't gotten through to that last crowd, but that's who this video is really for. Don't be intimidated. Try your hardest. And you have no right to be a weak pussy. Thanks for watching.